This is part two of a recent series on statin side effects. I think we titled it Statins Can Kill, and I used them. Um, this was on uh, David Diamond's uh, STEM Talk, episode 41. Uh, an, a, um, a very well-informed uh, uh, patient of mine asked me to, um, to give me his perspectives. I, I did and uh, recorded it. You can see that um, on this video. Statins, are they worth it? STEM 41. Um, David Diamond. Uh, there's a review of that video by myself. I actually agreed with everything David Diamond said except for one thing. So he and I got all the way to the end and came to different conclusions. Here was the issue. Relative risk versus absolute risk. He's saying, look, uh, statins cause a, uh, a decrease in relative risk. Once you look at relative versus absolute risk, it washes out. It's not the, the benefit of statins is not worth the risk, uh, the, uh, the risk that they create. I looked at the same data and I say, yes, they are. And in fact, I'm not alone. The, um, American College of Cardiology and, uh, a lot of other folks who've studied this very deeply uh, would agree with me. So let's take a little bit uh, deeper look. Again, this is um, coming out of a, a uh, recent series, Statins Kill. Um, basically, I'm, one of the key uh, videos out of this series is going to be a, um, a very practical article by the Mayo Clinic regarding statins and what to do to look for statin uh, for side effects if you have them, how to avoid them, how to deal with them. Uh, but let's get back to the theoretical issue of stopping statins or refusing to take statins because uh, it's just a relative risk. It's not that much of an improvement. Let's go back and take a look at the American College of Cardiology uh, in JAC, the journal of the ACC, uh, November 17, 20, uh, 2016. Summarizing the current state and evidence on efficacy and safety of statin therapy. Uh, the first thing they talk about coming out of the blocks is the issue that I'm concerned about. Adverse media coverage of the thing like um, David Diamond's article or video of, quote, statin intolerance, end quote, has profound public health implications. They go on to talk about, um, they do have ser serious side effects. I mean, rhabdomyolysis, which is breakdown of the muscles, it's rare. Uh, but it can actually kill you by overloading your kidneys with a, with a uh, protein from that process. Liver toxicity as well. And I'll actually cover the liver safety uh, recommendations. Folks, again, that do this all day, every day, and have studied it and have given us some recommendations. I'll also give you a quick spoiler on that one. You can avoid watching the whole thing and going through all the details on it just by remembering one thing. If your liver study, uh, liver functions, ALT and AST, if they go up less than triple, less than three times the upper limits, you're still okay. Sound weird? We can go into uh, then watch the video. But this is a different one. This is focusing mostly on uh, absolute versus uh, relative risk and um, David Diamond's viewpoint versus mine in the American College of Cardiology. Um, <clears throat> evidence on statin intolerance is derived principally from observational studies and reports to regulatory authorities. Uh, however, the concept of statin intolerance is a common problem and might outweigh statin-associated benefits has been introduced in the medical literature and emphasized in, by the public health media. This has profound public health implications. Studies in the United Kingdom, Denmark, and Australia linking adverse media coverage with, significant patient, uh, with significantly increased reluctance among physicians to discuss and prescribe statins and reduce patient adherence to statins. In the UK, an estimated 10% increase in statin continu discontinuation among patients resulted in an excess of two to 6,000 cardiovascular events that could have been prevented with statin use. Now, where did they get that? Uh, they got some of that from the um, Rory Collins and the Statin uh, Trialist Group, Lancet uh, 2016. I've covered that several times. I'll just refer back to it very quickly. Basically, uh, 
Rory Collins and the Staten trialist groups are, are guys that are known defenders of statins. And they make the point, uh, like most of us, well, a lot of us would, yes, statins do kill. It's fairly uh, unusual. Um, these are all the kinds of the key side effects that you tend to see with it, uh, myopathy, uh, new onset diabetes, hemorrhagic stroke, which was thought to be an issue at that time, but really turned out not to. If you add all of those together, um, usually out of this group, you're not going to get a single death. Uh, you might get one. But here's the other thing. Uh, for that same group of people, 10,000 people, 10 years, low risk, 500 of them are going to die from a heart attack or stroke. If it's a higher risk group, 10, 000, or 1,000 out of the 10,000. In other words, 10%. My perspective would be slightly different. My perspective would be, look, that's actually low. And here's why. You've heard me mention many times, I've just done a couple of series on CIMT. What is CIMT? It's an ultrasound of the neck where you look at how much plaque has been laid down. Um, regular ultrasound of the neck only tells you if you've got um, uh, change in or obstruction of the flow of the blood. A CIMT is different. It tells you if you have any plaque at all, even if it isn't obstructing flow of the blood. The, the critical study on that was called the Cafes de Cave. They did, uh, what, 10,000 people? And here's what they found. Of course, if you had enough plaque to obstruct the flow in your carotid, you had an 80% probability of having a cardiovascular event over the next 10 years. But what about those people where you didn't get obstruction of the blood flow? 40% of them had a heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years. That's why we actually look at CIMT, because it'll tell you about plaque that doesn't obstruct the flow. It tells you if you have significant risk. Now, how, how risky is 40%? Well, under the standard uh, risk factors like Framingham, 20% is considered to be high risk. Now let's go back and think about relative versus absolute risk. So if you're looking at a group that has Let's keep it simple because my, uh, for my, my math uh, numbers, let's say it's 100 people and um, it's 10%. Um, that's, that would still be considered to, uh, to be a relatively, that's a significant risk, but uh, 10%. So 10 out of 10 uh, years are going to have an event. If you decrease that by 25%, then you go from 10 people having an event down to between seven and eight. So that's actually what um, David Diamond was talking about. He says, you're only, you're, you're subjecting 100 people to statin dangers, but only saving two. Well, again, um, and he used, again, look at these numbers. Yes, you do get some dangers with statins, but not like the benefit associated with decreasing uh, risk. But let's go back and think about this population, 40%. So you don't recommend statins for people that have um, 5%, 2%. Uh, there are arguments over whether or not you'd recommend uh, statins for people that have 10%. I'll put all those arguments aside. I recommend statins for people that have 40% or more. And I also recommend very low dose statins. So things like the, um, the diabetes, moving it down the diabetes highway, the, mus the muscle pain, the liver uh, issues, rhabdomyolysis. Myelis I, I haven't seen any of those. And again, there is some association with uh, decreased statin dose. And I'm not looking at LDL, I'm looking at um, cardiovascular inflammation, which is a very different issue I'm not going to get into right now. So let's go back to the Jack article. They, uh, Jack, uh, here's where I part company with the American College of Cardiology. I focus more on um, 
again, inflammation rather than LDL. But here, in a meta-analysis of 27 randomized clinical trials and 147,000 participants, uh, the relative risk of major adverse cardiovascular events is reduced by 20 to 25 percent. All-cause mortality is reduced by 10 percent. So again, if you do reduce uh, all-cause mortality by 10 percent, or let's let's look at at what I do and the difference here. A uh, major uh, a relative risk decrease of 20 to 25 percent. If your probability is 40 percent of having an event over the next 10 years, that decreases it to 30 percent. Again, looking at the kind of side effect probabilities that we see, that's a good bargain. Now, that's why I use it. Um, would, do I uh, treat patients that don't want to use it? Of course I do. As I've mentioned many times before, a third to a half of my patients um, uh, at many times here in my practice have not used statins. And I'm talking about a third to a half of people that were in that 40% group that um, I think most of us might agree that, you know, maybe that's worth it if it's 40% probability of having a heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years. I'm talking about folks that had heard these uh, videos from folks like David Diamond and said, I don't care. I don't know the statistics. I just don't want to take statins. I'm comfortable working with patients that do that. But again, the purposes of this series of videos is to help you understand a little bit more about the real statistics. Maybe it got a little bit muddy there. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest. If you hit the uh, like button, and for sure if you subscribe or share, the algorithm reads that as a strong message that humans think this is interesting and important information. And the algorithm can share it more than any of us humans. Um, <clears throat> speaking of uh, sharing, uh, the, one of the best ways of sharing is on social media. We've got active Facebook, Instagram, and uh, LinkedIn uh, activities going on right now. We've recently started up things in uh, Pinterest and uh, Twitter, so we'd love to see you there check us out. Finally, um, <clears throat> uh, with over 500 videos, a lot of people are saying, I can't find this video or that video. Our new social media uh, manager, Kim Hermosa, is starting to work on ways to help with that. So join the community. Uh, you can click on the links below and um, <clears throat> you can get a little bit better uh, access. Thank you again for your interest.